Hello Marilyn. Hi, well I just bought John something because I know that he's very fond of some yeah. particular types of alcohol. So I we thought it was... give him that one and um, hope he enjoys it. Uh, and just to say that um, it's very difficult to put into words um, what John did for me anyway. It, it was basically to, I think to all of us who very much felt we had failed when we didn't pass our 11 plus um, and felt very badly about it and didn't sort of feel that we were perhaps going to ever be very much in life and John from the word go always said don't you ever let anyone tell you that you're failures and uh, you know, you can in fact and you will you know do very well in life uh, and you, you mustn't let anyone else tell you any differently and um, I remember that because we had to leave school at 15 I don't honestly believe if we hadn't had the College of Preceptors which I believe you sort of pushed to have didn't you John? I did yeah. Yeah, yeah. if we hadn't taken that in the fourth year and Harvey couldn't even remember he'd taken it, so oh, there we yeah. are. Yeah. <laughs> I have to show him that we did take it. I don't think, I think if we hadn't had that to aim at and hadn't had that kind of um, the discipline of having to prepare for an exam, we would have perhaps been able to go on and do the, the exams we did do afterwards. I think we might have just had. You know, we well, just not had the sort of purpose that we did. That we mm. had to to do these exams, but more importantly, of course, as uh, Barry was saying, the camaraderie and so on that went with the with doing all the drama work. It brought us together. It gave us a purpose, and also because we experienced success. Um, we were, you know, we were all of us had a part to play, and we all experienced the success that makes you the people you are. And if you feel you're a failure. I think you sort of become a failure in life. And I, I honestly think that if John hadn't done what he did for, you know, particularly, I don't know what you feel, John, but I think you felt our year particularly had a tremendous amount of potential, didn't you? You did, you did indeed. Because so um, many of us went on, didn't we, to, yes. to sort of do things. Uh, something like two-thirds of the class went on mm. to get degrees. Yeah. yeah. And you just we just makes you wonder what happened when we were 11, <laughs> yeah. you know, what happened in 1959 yeah. and 1960 that we, well, that we, we, so many of us failed that, that particular exam. It's just, uh, and what effect it, you know, Ruth and I were talking earlier on and we, you know, we have to own that our three years at Campbell were probably some of the most unhappy of our lives. We didn't enjoy going to Camborne at all. Um, going, leaving on a Sunday night and coming back on a Friday evening. It was just horrendous. We just didn't... We weren't prepared to live away from home, really. We were too young it, mm. to to have the sort of people that we had to live with anyway. <laughs> you know, they, um, they weren't, you know, they weren't the sort of... They were, that, they were taking the money. They were taking the, the money and uh, uh, they weren't there to replace our parents in any way, shape or form. So working with John as a student or as a little girl at school, what was the biggest thing he got you to do? Well, I think probably do, to do St. Joan, really. Yeah. Yeah. With your shield and your sword. With my shield and my sword, definitely. Well, it's been a highlight of a lot of people's lives, hasn't it? Yeah, he did, uh, he did a sterling work with, with an awful lot of us. So do you remember doing St. Joan, John? She was absolutely marvellous. Yeah, she was. You know, stuck in my mind for years and years and years. Her performance in the trial scene, her, um, her speech when she um, was speaking to the Dauphin and to Robert de Baudricourt and uh, some of the long speeches she had to do were tremendous and seared into my soul are the closing lines of the play when the lights were out after the epilogue, after they'd all come back to see Joan, and uh, she said, Woe unto me when all men praise me, shall I come back to you? And they all say, Oh no, no, we're not ready for you, etc., etc. 
and uh, we, we can't have you. And then all alone, when the lights fade at the end, and I had someone very well on the lights, was it you? Someone like no, you? No, it was anyway. Roger Little. Um, it gradually faded the light, and then the spotlight came on this girl in the middle of the stage, and she comes out with the lines, Oh God, who made this beautiful world, when will it be ready to receive thy saints? How long, O oh Lord, how long? And that seared into my soul. It's a marvellous play, and I got a marvellous young actress to do it. And I've seen the play several times in London since. Once, very well done by Imogen Stubbs um, at one of the London theatres, but none of them moved me as much as Marilyn's performance. None of them. Because these are professional actors and, you know, it's run-of-the-mill stuff to them. Whereas for this girl, it was the whole of her life for those few short weeks. Mm. It was. Thank you, John. Thank you, Marilyn. Yeah, good, nice one. Right? Thank you.